Hey guys, welcome back to the Rabbit Motor Works YouTube channel. It's a special celebration as we've just marked our one year on YouTube. So wanted to share that with you guys. Appreciate all the support. I've been having a lot of fun with the channel. Hope you guys have too. My son's been enjoying it as well. But today's video, we're gonna get back to putting the cooling system in the Cutlass. And I've got a new fan clutch already on. As the old one was burned out with the wobble. So that's good. And doing a lot of painting of getting the front cowl and everything else ready. So we've got all kinds of stuff, including the radiator, hoses, you name it. So stay tuned, should be a good episode. Okay, so one of the things I've been prepping uh, off camera is getting this rubber seal back on the radiator. I think as you guys saw on the last video, uh, the other rubber that was there was absolutely trash. Plus the radiator is completely painted. So that's awesome. I've had to get some specialty parts. My radiator hose spring for the lower hose as well too. Cracked in half uh, and it was kind of corroded so I ordered a new one of those. Got that from Fusik, uh, Olds Parts, along with some other specialities like a hose clamp for the top radiator hose that goes to the shroud. And then I got some of this rubber um, seal for the, the top of the cowl as well, as this was just absolutely cracked and trashed. Got our Breeze hose clamps, our black heater hoses, and then the uh, both the upper and lower radiator hoses. So that's good. I also have some other parts come in and uh, we'll open those and do a little bit of unboxing of those for you guys. But really it's gonna be trying to drop that radiator in in this newly and freshly cleaned up area on the front part of the car.
Okay, guys, the radiator is in and all the hoses are connected, train lines are connected. The last thing I'm missing is a clamp and I gotta order one of those. So either way, progress. So next thing we'll do is we'll put these rubber flaps on. So stay tuned. Okay, guys, the radiator assembly is complete. I ran to O'Reilly and got a ho hose clamp for the lower. And then I also picked up a new piece of coolant bottle hose. So, what do they call that? I don't know. Drain hose? Coolant overflow hose. Ta-da! <laughs> That's it. And uh, I think we're ready to fill coolant. And I got two things of pressed stone. And we'll do 50-50 mix of that. And I will get the battery back in it. So we can actually start the motor and then turn it over. So that's cool. And all the rest of the stuff is good to go. So I'm excited. We can finally throw a coolant in it and seal it up. So let's do that. Okay, so this is the concentrate. I guess I'd like to measure it out. I don't know how you guys do it, but... clean coolant looking at everything everything is nice and sealed no leaks and we got our new fan clutch on and that thing is nice and nice and smooth it even feels like it's a bit more responsive so it's like every little thing that we're doing to this thing it just keeps getting better and better so now that's good coolant over cooling success so cooling system is rad i put these uh little cowl seals on too so those are supposed to keep air moving this way over the engine both sides so that's great and i think the next thing that we're going to be focused in on is probably taking this quarter panel off and i've got to tackle painting this cowl there was some overspray from the primer when they did the windshield. There's some primer inside the dash I'm gonna have to touch up somehow as well. But before I put the hood back on and align everything else, uh, I've gotta get this cowl painted with that hood off. I do have a gasket uh, that goes over this as well. And then there's, uh, this screen is all cleaned up too and I'll do a uh, last vacuum in there to make sure that it's nice and sealed and there's no more debris in there. So let's do that stuff next. Okay guys. This side is jacked. Both of the bolts, I can't get off the bottom. So I already tried to reach in through the panel and I think we're gonna take it off the good old easier way. Here we go.
minutes too. Okay, so lo and behold, a big old chunk of seam sealer or something in there. So this is supposed to be the drain hole for these quarters. And uh, I just don't see how that was supposed to have worked with a big chunk of that stuff kind of like blocking it. Anyways, you're supposed to have full ability for stuff to kind of flow in and out of here. So. We've opened it up, plus I see that there's a big chunk of seam sealer missing here, covering this. Oh, not so impressive hole here either. So, and uh, yeah, and that little hole right there, nice jam. Guys, that's factory original right there. <laughs> that's pretty amazing that they uh, just slammed some seam sealer in that hole. So, uh, yeah, I guess it was a different time in the 70s, so and you just see how the seam sealer literally just, you know, it's just flaking off, so, and uh, that to me is like what we needed to kind of address and fix by taking this quarter off for sure, so, and then there's chunks of it in there as well so but yeah just figured I'd show that to you guys so I thought that was kind of a comical thing there so we're making progress and this is all cleaned up now amazing how much stuff just builds up and uh, cakes on over the years I used our favorite Glass cleaner, spray away, no sponsored products here, but it's a great uh, cleanup chemical to get everything kind of knocked out. And as you can see, when they replaced the windshield, they obviously did some kind of repairs to the cowl, as there's a couple of spots of filler and other things. The windshield looks great. Uh, I really don't feel like replacing the windshield. I think it's something I can work around. But all this gray primer and multicolors, missing seam sealer, is really what we've got to get across and clean up. So same thing with this side as well. You can see there's some filler here. And I think they did a really good job sealing it. It's just not such a good job painting it. So, and it is a integral radio antenna within the glass so it's, it's probably a pretty expensive windshield i would guess too so so i'm going to lay some plastic over the windshield i'm going to tape a line here and i'm going to lay some plastic over the motor then i'm going to hit some some primer on this and get it ready uh to set up for seam sealer this stuff i already did previously and i'm just going to go over it again just to make sure everything's loose um yeah other than that it's just coming along and uh even cleaning stuff up with dawn and everything else is really exposed just the raw material of this so this part here in the frame I'll, I'll clean that up and use some of that eastwood rust preventative or rust converter converter rust just like this side which turned out really nice as you guys can see, everything is much more black over here and, uh, and cleaned up. So that was kind of the intent of getting this fender off to do the same. So that gives me easy access. The other thing that I did was on the other side, 
There's all kinds of caked up grease from probably 50 years of greasing ball joints and related. So I just kind of chiseled all that off because it's just caked with dirt. And, uh, and then I hit it with Simple Green. So we'll do that too. But man, oh man, how cool it is to take the car apart like this and get it all cleaned up and, uh, and knocked down. So we're going to keep pushing on, guys. Okay, guys, it's primered up. Looks way better when you don't have like three different colors going on. So everything is in great shape. I got the brushes out uh, and I started to uh, pull out the seam sealing compound I'm going to use. Paintable in 60 minutes. So let's hope that dries. It's a nice hot day. And we've got seam sealing to do all the way along all these areas here. Cowl. And then all the way along that, that edge there as well too. So let's do that and uh, hope it goes nice and smooth. We'll get the rubber gloves on and the brushes ready as well. So here we go. One tube of seam sealer applied and it's starting to tack up. I don't know about being ready to paint in an hour though. So I'm not too big on throwing paint over something that's still kind of soft. So uh, if I have to wait till tomorrow to paint, that's fine. I also used some more of it in the inside as this was the original seam sealer that I took out. So I've got one tube left and I'll probably continue on and run across all the perimeters of the floor pans and the seam going across the tunnel. So it's good. So I might as well knock it all out, get it all at one time. Uh, the other thing that I started to do as well too was I took off this window trim and I was starting to get some of that going as well. So tons of stuff to do, just keep moving forward with, with things. And I did chisel away some of the um, grease, dirt, balls. Anyways, that's all gone, just like the other side. And then I'll basically uh, get ready to paint the frame with the Eastwood Restorer. So, but man, it's feeling good to get this thing progressing. And uh, it's quite the quite the appearance with the both fenders off the front of it as well too. So, it's pretty neat. Yeah, so, let's keep at it and keep moving. seam sealer done. Ta-da! Look at those white stripes. And we did some on the inside. 
We actually did some in the trunk too, didn't we, dude? Yeah. Also, we did some over here. Yeah. But we painted it over. We painted it already. And I think we popped the trunk. Should show everybody what we did in the trunk, too. This is just the start of probably more stuff to do. But we ran it on both sides. Look, there's a hole in the fender. Yeah, you remember that? It's actually the widow hole. Yeah, we gotta fix that. We're in that fix out in the widow bit. Yeah, we got welding to do today too. And we're gonna fill some holes. Yeah. Now, let's do some spray. Okay. Oh my gosh, that's way better. Yep, it is. If you don't remember, it was like, uh, it, in this inside, it was, uh, like, uh, hard. I didn't see in the, there was some out the outside too, in the front, and it was super hard. The inside was super hard doing it. Now we got that done, so we can work on other parts of the tar. Right, okay, I gotta put our plastic back on. I forgot because. What? You might get paint on the white like, parts no, on the tar. Paint on the motor. And. If you get paint on the motor, you have to we paint the motor and then yeah we if paint. You paint on the motor, that would be really unfortunate because that would be really messy to get off. Yeah, like you might have to like put a uh, put uh buy new uh things and then like who turned off the lights? Oh, never mind. Uh, do uh. It might, you might have to do like a new uh, thing. And if it gets paint on the motor, you might have to, have to do the new motor because you can't really we'll paint it. We paint it. That's right. So, just gonna kind of keep tapping this in here. Okay, that looks good. Now I can hit it. You know what, you don't want to get, you know what the really want part you don't want to get on is the windshield. We don't want it on the windshield, and we certainly don't want it on the motor either. Yeah. Or you don't want it in a tar because you're doing the paint it. Yeah. Of those, uh, of these, uh, wheels were on the tar, we would have to look. F, and we only painted, we painted these things, you're right, you're going to see in the future. If we had it on the tar right now, it would get painted. Update of where we're at. We did a mad paint a thon and we had to go to Home Depot to get more paint because we ran out. So if we take a look at the top of the cowl, here let me show guys a little bit. We got our nice coat of semi gloss across the top and uh, on top of some of the primer as well. Right, dude? Yeah. Okay. And also, we got some of the interior in the back front. We got seams there on the interior back trunk, but we don't yeah. have paint there yet. Yeah. This looks really clean now with the uh, windshield and the cowl, and so that's what we were going for. Hey guys, so let's catch you up on where we're at now. Uh, we've been on a mad paint a thon, and we put our enamel coat, uh, a couple of nice coats on top of the cowl, so I took off all the plastic. It really is looking sharp now against that windshield. It's all cleaned up. In fact, you can see the primer on the dashboard. Now I'll fix that. Uh, I think we're going to start dealing in, diving in, dealing in. Anyways, <laughs> we're going to
we're gonna start working on our belt line work that we need to do. And that's taking these nubs out. And then I've got to fill some of these holes. And let's show those the neat new tool that we got too. So this contraption here, which is basically a copper backing. Where, where you put it on the piece in the metal yeah. and it's weld to uh, weld uh, like the little holes in the magnet. Okay. So some of the next things we're gonna do on it is take care of our belt line molding and we're gonna take off those little nubs and then we're gonna use this new tool that I bought here and it's uh, a copper backer for welding which you literally take and line up so something like that and uh, you're able to get it set behind like that which allows you to fill that up with weld and uh, we'll do that on all the holes that we can get behind at least like those big ones and then these ones on the trunk as well as those are trim molding holes that we want to take care of so other than that it's starting to come around so we gotta take all these nubs off over here i think i'll probably hit this with the flap disc too i think there might be some filler maybe right here i don't know we'll see but i'm gonna start buzzing that away and then this stuff here i'll need to do some metal repair on but for now i think we're going to tackle some of the easy stuff with getting the holes and the nubs done and then we'll throw a bit of primer on those spots. So let's get into that. Okay, did some more stuff off camera. The big thing I just did is I basically scrubbed the uh, the frame with a wire brush and I hit it up with uh, some of that cool Eastwood rust converter. And that stuff does a really good job it's the stuff that I've been using on the front here as well. So now I've got a full cleaned up frame, both sides. And I uh, took all that rust and scale off of it. So it's pretty decent looking. So that's awesome. But now I think we're going to do some work on uh, the welding and we're going to tighten up some of those holes so let's do that
Okay, guys, so we've got everything filled. I did uncover a rust hole here, which is gonna need a patch. But as you can see, all the rockers and the belt line are basically welded in. Come along the back. We've got holes filled along the back. Holes will be able to trim as I'm gonna remove that and just go with the chrome style. And it's the same on this side as well too. So our little titanium welder has been pretty handy. I'm trying to make the best of it. It is a bit more of a challenge than a regular MIG welder with gas. So it's just a lot of um, persistence and patience with it. Um, other than that, I think we're at a good spot to stop for this video. It's uh, been a lot of work this weekend uh, doing it. And uh, again, thanks everybody for the support and congratulating us on our one year on YouTube. So hopefully this project and many other projects that we bring to the channel is something you guys are, are interested in. And appreciate all the support. If you haven't subscribed already, please like the video, add some comments, follow me on Instagram, and thanks everybody for watching. Peace.